Today we're going to work on a more complicated problem uh, relating to kinematics. And so the question is that is as follows. You're standing on the roof of Holmes Hall. So this is you right here. Um, and Holmes Hall has a height of 25 meters and you're going to throw a ball to a friend on the ground who's over here. You throw the ball at a speed of 30 meters per second with an angle 40 degrees with respect to the horizontal. And what we're looking for is how far must your friend stand from the foot of the building in order to catch the ball. And so we're going to assume um, that your friend catches the ball at exactly ground level. So it doesn't really matter, but it's going to make things a little bit simpler. And in this problem, we're solving the equations of 2D kinematics. And we are explicitly going to ignore air resistance. because this makes life much, much easier when it comes to solving this problem. All right, so let's take a minute to draw some, pic to draw some pictures. Um, so first off, when I throw the ball, it's going to start at me standing on the roof of Holmes and come over here and my friend is going to catch it and we're gonna just extend that down to the ground. And so that's where we have to worry about. Now, important quantities, the initial velocity is going to be some velocity, and we'll call it v naught. and I told you that it was uh, 30 meters per second, and that is happening, and it's at an angle of 40 degrees with respect to the horizontal. And that just means that there's a component of the velocity that's in the x direction, and there's a component in the y direction. And we'll start, uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. And then, finally, the ball starts a height, we'll call it h, above the ground. And what we're looking for is the distance, and I'm just going to go ahead and call my distance delta x that we are looking for when the ball lands. And so, what we're going to do here to solve this is break it up into its x and y components and then calculate from there. And it's key to note that once we break it up into the x and the y components, we're going to use the y component to get the time of flight, and so we'll call it t flight, and then we're going to use the x component to get the distance. So in other words, we break apart the x and the y uh, velocities and accelerations, and we say, with, the, with just the y component, how long will this ball be in flight? And then with the x component, using that information, we ask, how far from Holmes do you have to be? So then, let's go ahead and do this. So first off, let's write down our acceleration and velocity and position and all that good stuff. So first off, the acceleration, and I'm going to use the column notation that I've been using in class, is going to be zero in the x direction and minus g in the y direction. And just a reminder, g is the acceleration due to gravity, and it's 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, the velocity, and again, the acceleration is a constant. So, the velocity as a function of time, we can break down into the x component and the y component. And the x component is going to be v naught in the x direction plus at and v naught in the y direction plus at. Now, this simplifies considerably because the acceleration in the x direction, when we look up here, is just zero. And the acceleration in the y direction, when we look up here, is minus g. So this allows us to say the velocity as a function of time is v naught in the x direction, v naught x in the x direction, and v naught y minus gt in the y direction. And so this tells us that the velocity in the y direction, I'm sorry, the velocity in the x direction is constant. That's what this is telling me right here. But the velocity in the y direction is not. And so then, from this, we can write down the position as a function of time. And that is just going to be, you know, I'm going to write it down for the sake of argument, but it's s naught 
in the x direction, plus v naught in the x direction times time, plus one half the acceleration in the x direction times time squared, and then in the y direction it's s naught y plus v naught y times time plus one half a y t squared. And so now what we can do is correct for or is simplify this. So we're going to say the position is zero in the x direction, because really we just want the difference. And we already know the acceleration in the x direction is different. So that just means that there's a term in the x direction. In the y direction, we know that our initial position is a height h above the ground. And of course, we know that the acceleration in the y direction is minus g. So when I write this out, I see that the position as a function of time is just going to be, let's go ahead and move this down, is just going to be uh, v naught in the x direction times time, and then h plus v naught in the y direction times time minus one half g t squared. So now what we're going to do is use the y component of the ball's motion to calculate t flight, the time that the ball is in flight. And I'm going to call it t sub f for short. And so what we know is that at t sub f, y as a function of tf must be equal to zero. So in other words, it's going to be on the ground at time t flight when it lands. And that just means that, writing this out, zero is going to be equal to h plus v naught times t flight minus one half g t flight quantity squared. And so uh, when you look at this, hopefully what you see is, aha, this is a quadratic equation, and we all know how to solve a quadratic equation. And so it's all equal to zero. And we know that this is a in our ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, don't forget the minus sign in that. V naught, uh, and that's a V naught in the y direction, by the way, is going to be our B, and H is going to be our C. And so now what we can do is actually just go ahead and plug this all in into the uh, quadratic equation and get T flight. And what we see is that T flight is equal to, and this is going to be minus V naught in the y direction, which remember is V sine theta, plus or minus the square root of v naught y squared minus 4 and then minus 1 half g times h so it's minus 4 ac uh, divided by 2 times minus 1 half g and so that's our standard quadratic equation and I can clean this up just a little bit and see tf is equal to minus v naught y plus or minus the square root of v naught y quantity squared plus 2gh all divided by minus g. And so if I take a look at all of my values, I see that v naught y is just going to be equal to... Um, 19.28 meters per second. H is 25 meters. And G is 9.81 meters per second squared. And so I plug all this in, and I get time of flight, T sub F, is equal to, and since it's a quadratic equation, there are two possible answers. So it's minus 1.028 seconds, and also positive 4.959 seconds. And so since one of these is negative, we throw that one away because we're interested in times after zero. So the time of flight is 4.959 seconds. And so now, we can use that time of flight in the x component. And so what we do now is that we know how long the ball was in the air, 
and now we can ask the question, how far did it go? And so what we know is that the x position at the time of t flight is just going to be v naught in the x direction times t flight, because recall, there's no acceleration in the x direction, and we're saying that it starts out from a position of zero. And so v naught in the x direction is 22.98 meters per second, and time of flight is again 4.959 seconds. So when I put all that together, I get 113.96 meters, and that is my uh, what I called delta x at the beginning of the problem. So this is the distance that your friend is going to have to be away from the base of Holmes Hall. And so, uh, coming back to our original picture, what we see is that the distance, the, the horizontal distance, is this value right here, and that is delta x equals 113.96 meters. And so, the important, uh, something to note here is that we could not use the range equation. And the reason why we had to go through this and the reason why we could not use the range equation uh, has to do with the relative, the, uh, the, vertical velocity, or the vertical positions. Because you, right here, and your friend are not at the same height. And since you're not at the same height, you can't use the range equation. If instead you were on the ground, say down here, then you can use that range equation. But if you're not, if you're above or below your friend, then you have to go and calculate this um, the way that we just did it. Thank you.